Welcome to Neetu's Library. Today we are going ahead with the English story, The English Teacher, written by R.K. Narayan. But before that, we would like to hear from you through comments, how are you liking the story? And if there are any suggestions, do write and let us know. In this chapter, we will deal with the description of Leela's school. Krishna decides to spend the next Sunday in his daughter's company, but she is getting for school early in the morning. Krishna learns that there are no Sundays in her school and decides to accompany her there. About 20 children are already there, running about and playing. The seesaws and the swings are in full use. Krishna is taken around his thatch-roofed room by the headmaster who shows him the handiwork of children in pictures, cardboard cutouts and clay figures. He is trying a new experiment in education which he believes should aim at shaping the mind and character of students without undue emphasis on sports and games. For this, no fancy building or elaborate setup is required. Only a shed and a few mats are required in addition to open air. Krishna then witnesses a story session that the headmaster invites the children to participate in. With the help of charts and pictures, the children follow the story of a bison, a tiger and a bear in Mempi forests. As the story progresses, they take sides with the various characters and are thoroughly involved with the happenings in the story that the headmaster goes on improvising. At the end of the story, Leela wants a cat and the headmaster promises to get her one. For this, she will have to come to his house. Leela readily agrees. On way to the headmaster's home, Krishna invites him to have dinner at his house. There, the headmaster talks of reducing everything to simple basics as the children do. He considers them gods on earth. Krishna is impressed with the eccentric looking man, tells him that he would have liked to remain a bachelor without encumbrances so that he could devote all his time to the cause children's education. The headmaster lives in a neglected part of the town. It is full of dirt, dust and grime. His wife is a virago and his children are uncouth and wild. The wife starts quarreling with her husband, unmindful of the presence of Krishna and the child. The cat that he promised Leela is nowhere to be found and the headmaster returns to Krishna's hoy where he feels more relaxed and at peace with himself. As they go for a walk on the riverside, the headmaster tells Krishna how he has been forced into the marriage. He has left his parental home because he refused to take up a job after graduation and his wife still misses the comforts of that house. After his father's death, his house is occupied by his stepmother and her children and he refuses to get into litigation in order to get his legal rights. This is what worries his wife but he has not lost hope for her yet. We should not despair even for the worst on earth, he tells Krishna. He has been inspired to start his school because his teachers made him take a wrong turn in life. He is trying a new system of education in which the children are left alone to pursue their hobbies and interests. This will make them wholesome beings and also help us, those who work along with them, to work off the curse of adulthood. And he wants to work towards his end, which is very near. An astrologer has already worked out and told him the date and time of his death. Since the astrologer's other predictions in his life have turned out to be true, 
the headmaster is convinced that this will also be true. That's why he is so patient with his wife. He tells Krishna. Krishna's sittings with the medium are disrupted for weeks because the man is either ill or away on some work. Krishna is desolate. Then they try sittings in absentia at fixed times and the medium conveys it through letters to Krishna. Eventually, he succeeds in directly communicating with Sushila's spirit at the dead of the night. This gives inexplicable satisfaction to both of them. Sushila assures him that she is happy and she wants Krishna to be happy, calm and relaxed for her sake. She assures him that she is always with him and is watching his every move and activity. One night, the headmaster comes as Krishna is getting ready to communicate with his wife. He says that his end has come as predicted by the astrologer and he wants Krishna to take charge of his school. His life has gone on strictly as predicted by the astrologer and he may not see the sunrise. Krishna finds him the strangest man he has ever come across. One who is looking forward to his own death as if he were going to the next street. The next morning, Krishna goes to the headmaster's house to inform her of her husband's death. She starts wailing loudly and people crowd around her. Just then, the headmaster appears. His wife and children cling to his feet. But he sees this as a new life for him. He is glad that the astrologer's prediction has gone wrong because he is meant for better things in life. He gives up his family life and detaches himself for his wife and children. He fixes a monthly allowance for them but breaks all ties with them. He stays in the school premises and is happy in the company of small children. Krishna's mother comes to visit him and the child. She brings a gold chain for Leela. As she takes it out and put it around the child's neck, Krishna notices that she takes it out of the ivory sandalwood box that Sushila has mentioned. He takes the box and measures it. It has more or less the same specifications as mentioned by Sushila's spirit. But he fails to unearth the bundle of 14 letters that she has talked of while communicating with him and his father-in-law is of no help in this matter. Leela goes with her grandmother to the village. She is happy in the company of other children and a teacher comes every day to teach her. Krishna visits her on the weekends and gradually comes to accept the loneliness of his own existence. He is happy that his child is being looked after and educated. She has also been well provided for by both her grandfathers. She has nothing much to worry about in life. Krishna gives resignation. Since he is at peace with himself now, Krishna makes up his mind to give up his job in Albert Mission College. It is monotonous, dull and dreary even though it gives him a regular income of a hundred rupees per month. The principal asks him to reconsider his decision but Krishna is determined. He is given a farewell at everyone calls him an uncompromising idealist at the function held in his honour. But Krishna tells them that he is no idealist. He is going to do what he likes to do, devote his time and energies to the education of small children in the headmaster's school at the paltry salary of 25 rupees a month. Krishna is now calm and relaxed as he has direct communion with the spirit of his dead wife at night. He is at peace with himself at last.
थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर लिसनिंग